Good morning. Thank you. Three. Good morning, everyone in the five continents and the universe. Thank you very much, Leticia Araceli Salas from Mexico for being here this morning with us. Today is the 16th of August, and this is our 18th international English online meeting. Unbelievable, 18th. And we are going to have 33, I guess. First, as usual, let me be grateful. Let me be grateful. So I want to show, I want to show something, if you allow me. Uh, can you see? Yes, sure. Okay. Yes. Uh, a word, a word that I started using since last weekend is gratitude. Why? Because I, it's scientifically proven that it makes a happier life. So. Before we start with our uh, guest speaker this morning, uh, these are some of the next guest speakers we are going to have. Uh, this is from Santa Cruz from Ecuador, Monica Rodriguez from Argentina, uh, Gustavo Gonzalez from Argentina, Mary Scholl from USA, Costa Rica, and Raj Gill from Canada. We are also going to have Christine Kuhn from the USA who lives in Dubai and also Mauricio Arango from Colombia, who is present this morning. We will also have Beatriz Serazo from Bolivia, Skip Gold from the USA, uh, Ruben Garcia representing Peru, Esther Vasquez from Argentina, and Rosemary Rivera from Bolivia, Tito Hidalgo from Ecuador, uh, Monica Rosas, who happens to be Leticia Araceli's family <laughs> from Mexico, <laughs> and finally, Glenda Gallardo from Peru, and, and the last one, but not the least, is Eugenia, Eugenia del Osa, Argentina. Okay, uh, today we are going to have Araceli Salas from Mexico. She will be talking about the next step, publish your work, keep yourself motivated. Uh, this is a photograph when I was in Mexico, DF, visiting your beautiful country, Leticia Araceli. And because of gratitude, let me express my gratitude to you again, because you gave us a whole day. You were traveling with us, eating with us, drinking with us, spending your time, spending your money. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for that, Leticia. And then uh, we got together in, in Universidad del Amazon in Colombia. Do you remember Leticia Araceli? If, if I'm not wrong, this is you, Leticia Araceli. Yes, I'm there, yes. Yeah, we, we were younger. I'm next to you. <laughs> yes, and this is Elizabeth from Ecuador. Elizabeth. And, and then Araceli was also in Pura, Peru, in my country for our yes. conference. Here you can see other uh, uh, friendly families like Dennis, like the great uh, speaker, Germain McDowell, uh, then uh, Rana, Rana, and, and my friend Anita. Anita. Okay. Just a minute, some people are waiting to get in. Okay. Okay. And, 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 and also Araceli was eating our delicious Peruvian ah, ceviche, yes. Yeah, wow. remember. Beatriz is here, Diana, yes. Yeah. Hello, Everyone. how are you? Great to see Everyone you. Everyone is here, Leticia Araceli. Now, the Araceli Salas has a PhD in language science and an MA in ELT. Dr. Salas is a professor, researcher in the Benemerita Universidad Autónoma de Puebla, Boab, Mexico. She has been a speaker in local and international events and published several academic articles and chapters in the field. Uh, Dr. Sala serves as the editor in chief of Lenguas en Contexto and associate editor of the TISOL and Mex TISOL journals. She is involved in TISOL and is the current chair of the EFL. Is. Her research interests include teacher education, ESP, discourse analysis, and leadership in ELT. So if you are planning to publish your work, this is the moment to ask your questions, and this is the moment to connect Leticia Araceli. One more time, thank you very much, Leticia, and let's give Leticia a warm round of virtual applause. Yes. <laughs> you may start, Leticia. Okay. 
Thank you, Jaime. First, I want to express my gratitude to you also because you invited me to be part of the community you are creating in South America. Uh, when I went to the Amazonia University, that was the first time I went to South America, and I was really surprised to see how united, how friendly all of you are. Yes, in the north in Mexico, we are all alone by ourselves. Yes. And and you are together. I, I really, I really love that feeling of um, community and I am always happy to share with you, with you all. So I um this is our this is the title of my talk today, the next step. Publish your work, keep yourself motivated. And we were talking, we were talking about motivation some minutes ago, and we have to be motivated. Who's going to motivate students if they are all at home, living what, whatever they have to live? So we have to keep ourselves in good shape, motivated, and um, and we are we are the models for them. That's why I gave my talk this uh, title. And let's see. I always like to show where I am, where I am in this moment. If you have seen this, you have seen this picture of Mexico. Uh, never before, never before. I've never seen that before. This is the famous Popocatépetl. It's a, it's a volcano and it's an active volcano and I live near, near it. That, it, it says good morning to me, uh, to me every day. And if you see this, this is a church and you know, be, uh, below the church, there is a pyramid. This, this, what you can see is a pyramid, pyramid in Cholula, and I live very near. So I am here right now. Good morning to everybody. Good afternoon for me, it's good morning. Go get, grab your cup of coffee and you are welcome to interrupt with your questions. You are welcome to, um, to, to, to ask your questions, to tell about your doubts and um, these are my objectives today. Hmm? First, uh, to raise awareness on bottom-up motivation. We're going to see that in a minute. Give attendees an overview on the publishing process in PLP, at least from the three journals I am involved, and encourage attendees to write and publish their work. Yes. So <laughs> before before we start. Um, before we start with uh, with, with uh, publishing and all that, first uh, let's um, you, let's uh, think of in which or or think about the stage of development in which you are. Well, I don't think you are pre-service teachers. You are probably you are novice, beginners. You are mid-career or career switchers. You have a new position. You, you are taking other responsibilities. Probably you are a veteran teacher or a semi-retired teacher. Yes, uh, this is, um, I used to use another classification, but now I'm book and reading, and I, this is the new, the new classification by England, this England. And you, the, the decisions you make from the, from the moment where you are, are going to impact in your career path. So think about uh, think about the decisions you made, the path you take, because because um, because it can take you to a more successful, more satisfying, and rewarding career path in TESOL. So I was uh, I was telling you there are two kinds of CPD. Top down. What is top down uh, CPD? Continuous professional development. That is the one organized by authorities. You don't organize it and you are made to go. They tell you on top of everything, you have to attend this meeting, you have to attend this seminar, you have to, you have to take this course. Is that familiar? <laughs> I suppose, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Hmm? Definitely. Yes, it is definitely. <laughs> definitely, we we don't. Uh, we usually don't like it because it is imposed. 
it is organized by other people who don't know about our, our internal aspirations, our internal goals. But there is also a kind of CPD, which is called bottom up, and it comes from inside us. It comes from the from our uh, from our desire to be better in what we like to do. And this is what is happening because look at us. I don't know how many people are, we are now. Yes, we're 30 here, but and I don't know how many people we are in Facebook, but if we, who's going to be here on Sunday morning? Who's going to be listening? Who's going to be willing to do all these things if you are not internally motivated? So I suppose that all of you are here because you like it, because you are passionate about your work and about the things that you do, yes? Thank you for being here, but so now you know that you are, you, your motivation is bottom up. It comes from within you. Um, why? Why is CPD important for teachers? Believe it or not, uh, CPD, continuous professional development, affects teachers' feelings. How do you feel when you, when you attend this these uh, seminars organized by Jaime. I think we, because I have attended some, not complete, some of, uh, some of these, and I am always happy. First, because I learn, I always learn something new. I get new ideas uh, because I, um, I, because I see friends, because I see what people are doing in other places. So it affects our feelings, our self-esteem, our self-image. Yes, and also our identity. Remember, you can be you can, in, in your in your uh, continuous professional development. You can go, uh, you can start growing, and that also changes your identity. You can be a novice teacher, and then you can you can uh, identify yourself as a, um, as a veteran teacher or as a, um, a um, what was it? the as a mid career teacher, etc. So, but also, also a meaning, very important, your meaning. Every time you learn something new, you give teaching a new meaning. Every time you, you do something new with your students, with yourself, you learn something, it, it gives different meaning to your actions, your activities in the classroom, yes? Um, it is also important, CPD is also important, because it's liberating, believe it or not. When you learn how to master something, technology, for example, it's liberating. Now you can do things that you couldn't do before. It's rewarding. You start getting more rewards, getting more, um, it's more gratifying, empowering. You feel more empowered. You feel that you can control your own path, your own actions. But let me tell you something, it's addictive. <laughs> if not, why would we be here at this time in the morning? We always say, what's next? Who's presenting? And the next thing, and, and, and what is next? And now, it's addictive. CPD is addictive because we understand that we always have something new to learn, and it is, um, uh, so it's addictive. I am always checking at webinars. Sometimes my children tell me that's too much and I agree that is too much because I'm always into reading or into webinars, but that's what I like. That's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to this demands on teachers. And I am going to relate this to my own experience. Uh, Probably you don't know that I started teaching when I was 15 years old. I, was, I already spoke English and I started teaching when I was 15 years old because, um, because I wanted to do it. I knew from the very beginning that I wanted to be a teacher. I never had that dilemma. I have, uh, and, um, so the opportunity came and I started as a technician. I just needed to learn the techniques to teach, but I didn't know about uh, about the theory behind activities etc so but but i could see that i needed i needed to to learn and i needed to um to continue learning so because 
there was a moment that I was very, at 16 probably, I was very happy teaching, <laughs> but I, I was not a professional, yes? And professional, uh -huh, looking at the word per se, professional is a person who goes for um, credentials, let's say, to go for a major, to go for a master. So having having two children at home and uh, the need to keep my job, I, I, I knew that I had to become a professional. So I went for my major, then my master's, then I, I got addicted to this, as I said, and uh, then I, I got my PhD. Then, but this, is, this happens everywhere. Then we become teachers. Teachers as teacher educators. Some of you, some of you, some uh, I see some of your names, and I know that you are into teacher education. Mm -hmm. And from teacher education, then you can become teachers, researchers, or researchers, teachers. Then probably we have experienced this as speakers uh -huh, speaking in a conference speaking in um, giving these webinars and then writers i know this is a lot and if you see it as a master compulsory path then you are not going to be happy and, and but if you see it remember from bottom up motivation then you are going to pursue that path and you are going to to be willing to walk all that long path Okay, why? Why to do teachers research? What are the reasons? Teachers do research to explore their teaching, to know their students, to learn more, to find solutions for problems. And if the problem that you have is a no problem, then you can find a new perspective to a no problem. Nobody has the same, the same um, circumstances. You always have a new valid perspective. Sometimes to get a degree, we have to do research. But all teachers have powerful stories in your classrooms. All of you, all of you have something to say, something very, very important to say. All the actions, all the combination of context, people, teaching, person, teacher, makes a very unique context. So all classrooms are singular. Tell us that story. Tell that story in a way of research, yes? All teachers can do research. And I am highlighting can, because you don't have to remember. Yeah, if you are going to, to do it because you have to, you're not going to enjoy it. But if you do it from your from, from inside, from uh, from your own bottom-up motivation, then you should do research. Anyway, you do what you have to do in the classroom. Why not turn it into a more systematic activity? So I know all teachers can do research. Yes. Uh -huh. And all research starts with a question. This is, uh, these are teachers in the classroom. You go with your plan and you say, everything is going, I hope everything is, it goes well. And then something happens. Probably you get angry and you say, what happened? I planned everything. Sometimes it goes well and you say, hmm, now it worked. Why did it work? Or maybe <laughs> you are frustrated sometimes in, the, um, in frustration, in the middle of frustration, we say, what happened here? I was ready, etc. Write your questions. All research starts with a question, a question that needs to be solved, that, that needs to be explored. Deep. And uh, well, you can start from different, different moods, but, uh, but all of these, all of these feelings, take you into, into, into research. If you take it as an advantage, everything that we are, we are going through these days, everything is a, is, um, can lead you to research, yes? So take it, take it 
take every every uh, experience in the classroom as an opportunity for research. Every time that you have a question, write it down. Write it down because it can lead you to do some research, yes? So, when you do research mm -hmm. and you have your question and you don't need to have many questions, with one question, you can, you can create, you can, um, you can establish the beginning, the foundations of your research. With one question, you can start. And you can, then you can plan and design research. Of course, you need to read. You need to read. You need to, you need to plan. Yes. And uh, you carry out your research. Well, probably you make a report. You write your research. And then you say, and now, now what? I have my research, it's very nice. It's, uh, I had some interesting results. You cannot keep them for yourself. What is the use of keeping your knowledge for yourself? You have to, you have it, you have to say it, you have to, you have to share it. You have to share your work, yes? May I say something, Araceli, yes. about that? That is, yes. that, is, that is one of the reasons of these meetings. I yes. don't like calling them webinars. I like call, it, call, in, call them uh, meetings because here, that is the question. Why to, to keep with you for the rest of your life all the knowledge, all the wisdom, all the, your expertise? Share it. Teach other people. Let other people know about your mistakes, your errors, and your life experiences. That is the reason. I, we, one of the reasons why we are here. And thank you for saying that, Araceli. Yeah, I know. I know that you, you, ha, you know the reason why you have invited all those people. And all those people have something to say. Yes? And, well, if you are already doing that, why not turn into research and then turn it into a published paper? Mm -hmm. So thank you. And, uh, and yeah. I know, I, we have learned a lot, a lot from everybody. Everybody and each one is unique, different, and that is the, that is the richness of this community you have created, Jaime. That is one of yours, that, that I have always recognized. Yes. Thank you, Araceli. Why do teachers and students write? Um, and why do teachers and students write and publish research? And not only research, other papers. We are going to see in a minute uh, what other papers you can publish. Why? Can you write some reasons why you, uh, why you publish research or why you should or what? Uh, what are your reasons to write? Why are you, you are, here? Why you, are you, asking, to... you are asking us, Araceli? Yes, I am asking you and write your answers in the chat. Okay, anybody who wants to express his or her opinion to this question? Anybody? Hello? Uh, <laughs> may I? Please, yeah. at least. Good morning. Yes, so first of all, it's lovely Sorry. to see you, Araceli. You look beautiful as always. And thank you, Jaime, for bringing us together. Thank you. To, thank you. to Araceli's question, I think. When you read other people's research, you learn. Yes, you learn from their experiences and you grow up. So I think it is fair enough that you also share your experience to help others with your ideas. You don't know who is in need of what you are just learning and sharing. So I think it is fair enough. And I would like to thank uh, Araceli because she gave me this speech some time ago. She convinced me and I have to admit, yes, it, it catches you, you want to continue doing it, you cannot stop, but above all, you have helped me grow up professionally. And I want to thank you for that because publishing, writing, trying to be systematic was something that I didn't do. And you helped me doing that. And based on that, I have noticed that I pay more attention to the things that I do in classes. So it's not that you are going to publish because you're going to help others, but also because you are going to help the most important people for you, that is your students. So thank you. Thank you, beautiful Lariseli. Yeah, Beatrice published. 
an article in um, in in the um, in Lenguas en Contexto, yes, and she published uh, something that she presented in Texler, Texler in um in a conference, in a conference, in, and she took she took the challenge and she did it That's successfully. It was a challenge, yes. <laughs> it was a challenge. Uh -huh. So yes, any other any other uh, idea why to why to publish why to write. Okay, I know it's okay. too early, so I'm going to help. Yes, I'd like to say something. <laughs> somebody, somebody, Araceli. Somebody, yes, please. Uh -huh. Ide identify yourself, please. I am Marisa, Marisa Huacho. How are Hello, you? Hello, Marisa oh, in Lima, Huacho. Yes, uh, hi, Araceli. Well, hi. I think uh, it is important, okay, obviously sharing, um, but it's a way to contribute, yes, it's a way to, to give back because if we research so then uh, we are also sharing best practices so then it's like um, enhancing this community yeah so we we are sharing with them what what worked for us so then it's a good way also to to keep growing no but together like uh, what we are doing now no like how, what Jaime is promoting like what you are where you are here so then we are learning and it is a way no another way not only through conferences or through okay webinars but also by okay sharing our best practice and also getting feedback from other people because it's a good way to grow okay i think it is very important really for our, our profession to to be able to to share and and to share things that have worked yes and maybe to give also input about what can be innovation you no know, in the classroom okay yes. that, that is what i yeah, exactly. That's why this is the um, this is um, this talk is about CPD and about uh, motivation, because um, through publications, through doing research, you keep yourself motivated, no matter in what stage of your of your career you are. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. You. Thank you, Araceli. Thank, Thank you very much. Yes, Roxana. Hello, Araceli. Good morning. Uh, just complimenting what uh, Marisa has said before is, and Jaime started this speech, is a way of gratitude. Because once, once I was a junior teacher, long, long ago, now I'm, I myself, I call myself like a senior teacher. But it's, a, it's a time to give. I've already, I've already received, and this, this is one of the things I like about my profession of giving and being givers and takers mm. so it's a way that others to experience mm -hmm. but to receive what we have already learned mm -hmm. and in that in that way they could have also the opportunity to improve our job mm -hmm. you no know, because we do we did something before it worked but uh, times have changed and they cannot apply it and they can uh, change it or motivate it in a different way and to apply it for their own and specific needs this is something that uh, is an opportunity that we get. That I got it before. I have received a lot of help when I started, and I, and it's a way to say something back, and to say as words as gratitude and, and sharing what we have learned, and to give the opportunities others to learn from us. I love what that. I think. Thank you. And also, when we write, we recognize what other people have done before. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right, Roxana. You are standing on what other people are doing and then you, you do your own and you, you grow, but at the same time, you recognize what people have done before you. I know that. I will, I will include that uh -huh, in, in future talks. Thank you very much. It's what? yours. It's ours now. <laughs> ours. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, why why do people need need because in some places in some contexts it is a need the need to publish as we said to share results to complete the research cycle yeah we we know that uh, all research needs to be um, needs to be shared in order to validate also results and to let people know what you are doing and probably you help other people to contribute to the field, to be part of the community of ELT authors, to graduate. Sometimes it is a requirement for
for postgraduate programs to have a publication in order to graduate, officially graduate, to study. And even in some, place, in some places, a PhD studies, they ask you to have a publication before you can enter. At least in Mexico, I know of two of the universities who are already asking for a publication before you start the program to get a promotion. It, it happens in my university. Publications are given a lot of um, value in this process to be somebody in the academic virtual world. As I always say, Google yourself and if your name only appears next to, next to memes, please <laughs> start doing something else. <laughs> yes. It is so rewarding to see your name next to something more academical. To be really excited, why not? It is a valid ambition of academicians to, to be read and cited. That's why you're doing that. Also for your self-esteem. And remember, CPD, CPD um, impacts even on your feelings, even on your self-esteem, yes? So these are some reasons. Now I am going to include what Roxana said about being thankful. Being thankful to peers, to people who have already done something. Be thankful for all the people who have contributed to your education to get to the point where you do research. I think it, you, 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 have to, you have to thank people. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that idea. Probably you have seen this. Yes, publish. First they told us publish. Publish or perish. Publish in high impact journals or perish. And then publish frequently. Now it's not only publish. Probably in some of your contexts it does not happen. But in some contexts it is happening. It is happening and you have to publish. I don't really want to believe it um, completely, but it happens. Mm -hmm. And also, because writing is a social practice, yes? This is what our community does. This is a community of practice. For example, all of you, some of you have given talks, some of you have written articles, some of you have presented in, in conferences, local, international conferences. Why? Because that is what is expected from this community of practice. You can explore this writing or, or activities as social practices. That is what is expected from us. Academic writing, scholarly publishing. And who publishes in ELT? Who's going to publish? The people who are in the classroom, the people who are doing the things in the classroom, not the people who are in a desk telling us what or what not to do. But to start publishing as a kind of literacy, you have to be very aware of the notion of gender. What is a gender? Who can tell me in the chat what is a gender in a very short, brief way? What is a gender? You have to be aware of this term. Anybody who wants to say you're right? No, okay. Genre is a kind of text. That's what you can, the, the, the easiest explanation. A genre is a kind of text. And we have to be aware of what you want to write because that is a genre you are going to go into to explore. And genres change from uh, different audiences, disciplines, languages. Each genre is unique and different, yes? For that, we need this, and I invite you to, to explore these concepts, the standards of textuality. If you want to, if you want your text to be part of uh, that uh, um, genre, then you have to meet the standards of textuality, your text, not you. Your text needs to meet the standards of textuality which are cohesion, coherence, intentionality. What is your purpose? Acceptability. Is it as accepted as an article? Is it accepted as a report? What level of informativity does it, um, 
does it give audience or readers situationality? Is it appropriate for that situation? And intertextuality, what Roxanne and I were commenting, intertextuality, how it is connected to other to other texts in the same in the same area, in the same discipline, etc. You can hear we have the the authors of these uh, of these standards of textuality. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep all this in mind. That's why people say uh, people think they cannot write. It's because they are not considering an article as a genre, as a very specific genre. Mm -hmm. And okay, please, how do you feel when you think of writing? Come on, write your feelings, only feelings. That is easy for you. Just feelings. How do you feel when you uh -huh. When you think of writing, happy, sad. I don't see your answers in the chat, or I don't see your. Uh -huh. so, so let's so let's try to understand what they are feeling is. Why they don't? <laughs> ah, okay, maybe. <laughs> maybe, or maybe. In this moment, they are only hungry. Maybe, no, maybe we feel afraid because other people will read what we are writing and we are afraid of making mistakes, okay, yeah. mistakes, mistakes or maybe they won't share our ideas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anybody else please who wants to speak or say something uh, I'm, yeah i, yeah, I mean i was I was going to say, add to what you were saying, is that is one of the things where we may, might want to hold ourselves with compassion because we are doubting ourselves and thinking, who's going to read my material? And so we don't write it. So that anxiety comes up. And when That's we hold true. ourselves with compassion, then we say, there's something I have to offer and I'm willing to take that risk. Yeah, yes. well said, Raj. <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, or not? Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. First is uh, when I was asked to write something, I feel honor of oh, honor uh -huh. having that. And nice. then I'm really, really excited to have the possibility to put it down because uh, the, the ideas, because sometimes we say something and then we don't have the opportunity to write it down, that they're gone. And they, and they have to be in a way memorable for others, no? In the same way, those thoughts were memorable for us. That's what I think is about uh, the challenge and the opportunity of having to write our thoughts, experiences, and what we have learned through our path of life, right? That's what I want to say. Honored. That's a nice word. Okay. But normally, normally people, people, feel afraid, people feel nervous, people feel overwhelmed. What do they say? Publishing is not easy. Publishing takes too long. But if we don't start, it's going to take longer. Not all journals are reliable, free, or indexed. They won't accept my paper. How do you know? I don't know how to write academically. These are some of the excuses I hear every day when I ask people to write, when I ask people to send me their, their, their uh, texts. And probably, probably um, there's some truth in each one of these uh, statements, but all of them are only assumptions, assumptions that we make about writing. And from what I have seen, these are assumptions, definitely. Of course, you have to be. Uh, you have to. You have to choose the. Um, you have to choose the journal, the um, or the newsletter where you want to publish. And there are two kinds of articles or publications. One is refereed. Refereed. It means that it's peer reviewed, and also index. Index are what universities are always looking for, and there are different indexes. Yes. Uh, some of these are indexes and probably if you see these in the journal or in the newsletter where you want to publish, it's going to be more, um, uh, more widespread, more, more known, but you have to start somewhere, yes? Here, if you want to take a picture or I am going to send, uh, to send um, 
to send a uh, high medis presentation. These, these are some journals where you can send your, your, um, your texts. All of these are free. Let me tell you, well, Mestizo, we're going to talk about Mestizo, La Clil in Colombia, Educación y Ciencia en México, Yucatán, Profile in Colombia, Revista Latinoamericana, Innovación Educativa, this is in Mexico, from the Poli, Tiso Journal, where I know, and we're going to talk a little about that, Ethica Lingua, and Westcliff International, this is a new one, they have a call for publication open right now, and Evelyn, Evelyn, um, Evelyn from Venezuela is involved in this one. In these ones, and I, I just mentioned this because I know in many known, renowned journals, you don't have to pay. I know that in some places in South America, you have to pay, and I don't know the processes. Probably it's okay, but the ones in Mexico and the ones um, run by universities, you don't have to pay. Yes, these are some examples. You have Argentinian Journal of Applied Linguistics, the Brazilian English Language Teaching Journal, Colombian Applied Linguistics Journals, EFL Journal, Education Matters, Reina, Asian Journal, they also have a call for publication now. The newsletters, if you think that you are not ready for a journal in this moment, start with the newsletters of teachers associations. Yes. Uh, Next is or TISOL, IATEFL, they all have they all have these newsletters and you can start. They are not as demanding as journals, but you can start there and they are always welcoming submissions. Also, um, you can start checking. I this is something that I do. I always check call, I always Google call for chapters. And I get some good ideas, and I have gotten published into the into these uh, books when I find some call open. However, not all not all journals are managed in the same way. Each journal has a different has a different process. These are the journals where I collaborate. Yes, Lenguas en Contexto with Chisa. Humble, <laughs> humble uh, journal in my university. Uh, here I am the editor in chief. The Mestizo Journal, which is Mestizo, and it is now it is now indexed in Scopus, and we're getting a lot of um, international international uh, articles. I am an associate editor in the Tiso Journal. I am also an associate editor for materials and reviews. Yes, okay. All of them, all of them have different processes. Yes, we are, we're going to talk a little about that. But for motivation, I want to show you some numbers now. Yes, these are taken from our uh, from a meeting that we have in the TESOL journal. This is these numbers are from TESOL journal because it's the most international, the most representative. Yes, look at the articles they have sent and look at the ones that are accepted and rejected. Look for our Latin American countries. Okay, here we have, we have Chile. Chile submitted one article and uh, one article and it was accepted, J for Chile. Colombia submitted one article and it was rejected. Ecuador, one article and it was rejected. Mm -hmm. Mexico, an article and it was rejected. Yes. Why? Because people are afraid to send them. Let me tell you, when you start exploring the text, you don't, I know you all can do this. Yes. Look at the representation. Uh -huh. We have Africa, Africa, that's 5%. Asia, 70%. Central South America, 4%. Europe, 26, Middle East, the Middle East, look, Middle East. North America, Oceania, yes, North America. And usually it's because they, they are uh, professors from universities. 
I think this is very representative for the, of what is happening. And it's not because they know more. It's, not, it's just because people are afraid to write. Mm -hmm. What are the, remember I told you, you don't, you don't, um, you cannot only submit research. You can also submit the, I'm talking about the TESOR journal, classroom explorations. Marisa mentioned best practices and classroom explorations are what we call best practices. You do something that you want to share with the world because it was great, it worked well, make it, make it an, a very short article. You know, classroom explorations is about 1,000 words. Conceptual or theoretical future articles. These are reflections. Probably this is the second chapter of your thesis, yes? Current issues in TESOL, you, you, you choose and you make a reflection. This is a reflection on what is happening in the field. And they are no more than, I think, 1,000, 2,000 words. An empirical future article, which is a research article, Materials and media review. You read a um, you read a book, or you or you use a, an application. Now that we are using ICTs, probably you can you can um, uh, you use one, and you want to share with people, with teachers around the world, what was your experience. Then this uh, this is the good one for you. Research briefs. You don't have to write an empirical complete feature article, you can, research, you can write a research brief. And special issue when there is a topic and teachers send their contributions for that. This is um, the TESOL journal. In Mex TESOL journal, in Mex TESOL journal, we have uh, in, the, in the last, the current issue, in the current issue, we have articles in Mex TESOL. Three articles from Iran, three articles from Mexico, one from, from all of these are one, Canada, Portugal, China, Colombia, Iraq, Philippines, Ecuador, yay, Colombia and Ecuador, Egypt, USA, and Turkey. Yes, so it's possible, it's possible to do it, yes. Um, why? why? We are afraid, we are afraid to be rejected. But let me tell you what the reasons usually are. Usually articles are rejected because they do not follow the guidelines of the journal. Because you don't do your homework well and you don't read each one of the guidelines. Because the articles do not respect the standards of sexuality. Maybe it's a great article, but, uh, but it is not for that situation. Remember situationally? Mm -hmm. Articles have syntax, punctuation, spelling typos. Title does not match content. Articles do not match the focus of the journal. Probably you have a very nice article, but it's not, it's not the appropriate journal to, to submit your article. Plagiarism right now. Yes, now it's a big, big issue and probably they don't accept if they find that there is more than 10% uh, um, material plagiarist. Authors do not make corresponding corrections. You know what, sometimes authors send their, their, their articles and they just don't follow the process. We send and we send reminders, but uh, they feel bad because they were corrected and well or no proofreading, probably you can have two or three friends and you can start um, a reading or a proofreading um, group that you can, I read your work, but you will read my, my work. And that, that's something that you have to do. But mainly because authors do not send articles. Yes, that is the, that is the action that, that that is the reason why don't we don't, we, you are not published because you don't send articles and remember something and keep this in mind everything and even rejection is about the text is never about the person 
as I answered some, some time ago, it's always about the text. It's not about you. I don't even know you. I don't even know who you are. I, I, I got an answer from a person and, and, and he said, in my 20 years as a, as a coordinator, and I say, but I, I'm, it's not against you. It's just the article that does not meet the standards. It's not about you, yes? And, but that is a little, uh, uh, you have to, to live it, to understand it, yes? Okay, let me tell you um, about uh, some guidelines, some, some tips, I guess. When you want to start writing academically, as I said, keep that genre in mind. If it is an exploration article, and a research article, a review, etc. The register, the register of your text and register is audience. Mm -hmm. Adapting, adapting your text to the to people who are going to read because we're talking about uh, text, written text. Also something important, an article is not a thesis for a thesis, is not an article. I have even, I have even uh, received submissions saying in this chapter, in, and, and you say it's not your thesis, really, I, I, I know it's, it's, it's not correct, but um, because uh, people, because people think that when they have a research is uh, that you can send it. But it's again, we go back to this concept. Thesis is a kind of genre, an article is a different kind of genre. Yes? If you are doing in this moment, if you are uh, completing your uh, postgraduate program, for your thesis, for a master's thesis, you, um, you can write two articles. Don't waste the complete thesis in only one article. Make two articles. Separate divide, segment your, your thesis and make two articles for a master's thesis and three articles for, for, for a PhD uh, thesis. But make them articles for a thesis. Classroom experiences are the foundations, the basis for many, many, many types of genres for classroom explorations or, or uh, best practices or for a, a, a complete research article, et cetera. Be careful with the organization. Jaime, we could have a complete course of, on academic writing, but uh, if you are interested, check this model, the IMRD model, introduction, methodology, results, and discussion. Check that. I am, I am Araceli, I will check it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yes, well, it was not you, but I mean, we can, we can have a complete, these are just tips. <laughs> there, there are all there. there oh, are they, they, they are not just tips. They are great pieces of advice, Leticia. <laughs> I'm sure that now, in, in, in spite of the fear we feel, we are motivated to start writing. Yes. Of, of course, <laughs> with, with your big help. Of course, I will be here and I will give you my email address. So check this model. This is the basis for your organization. Be careful with sentences and paragraphs. There are no paragraphs of one sentence. And even at very high levels, people don't write sentences or paragraphs properly. Number of authors. This is also, I know that because of academia, academia uh, requirements, sometimes you have to include two or three authors. And, um, but for me, for me, if it is, um, if, if I am going to include somebody, it's because that person is going to work. And more than two, I don't like personally, because we accept three or four authors in some of these of these uh, of these journals but for me in my experience i think that uh two two authors is what i recommend your literature review has to be from ten thousand and here now like uh recent i know that there are classics and you have to if you mention them that's great but most of your literature review your citations your references must be a newer, more recent than to, to, to 2010. 
And right now, APA 7. When we were becoming familiar with APA 6, this comes, yes, and there are not many changes. Eh? If, you, if you want, I can send um, a document. Uh, there are not many changes, so don't panic. It's almost the same. Yes, it's almost the same. What to expect after submitting an article? You were very brave. You wrote your article, you uh, did what you had to do, and you submitted an article. What to expect? Let me tell you about this process, about this process in the three journals I am involved. Well, in general, in general, and then we go one by one. In general, you submit it. The editor, the editor or the associate editors check plagiarism and the appropriacy of the article. Yes, sometimes if the, if, if the article is not appropriate for the journal, everything stops here. There is a, there is a filter here. And if the, if the editor or the associate editor say yes, then it goes to peer review. Usually it's two, or if, um, if, the, if the decisions made are not, are not uh, similar, then a third, a third reviewer can come to see you and the article can be, or the submission, the text can be accepted or rejected and usually it's not, well, it can be a rejected or a rejection, complete rejection, which is not nice, but you can also have revisions. Uh, revisions and the decision is major revisions or minor revisions. And then according to each one of the journals, then they have their own processes. For example, Language and Contexto, we have two, two reviewers and, uh, and the third one, if the decision is difficult to make, and then we, we accept or reject the article based on those provisions. If this old journal is very similar, this is more, um, a little more uh, demanding, and, um, and it takes longer. Language and Contexto is an annual, um, it's published annually, and it takes, six months to know, uh, to, to get your publication, if you are accepted. TESOL journal takes a long time, takes probably more than a year, mm -hmm. a year and a half, even two years to get your article published, because every time that you get a revision, it is sent to new re reviewers, and the process starts again. So it takes a long time, but it is, of course, very recognized worldwide. Makes this a journal. This is a very interesting, uh, a very interesting journal. Why? We have we have a system of mentorship. It's mentoring. An article, each article that we receive, from, uh, first it has to pass Joanne's, uh, our editor in chief, uh, Joanne's um, approval, and, uh, and she checks everything everything so if you're if your if your text if your ma uh, manuscript goes goes through this filter then you are assigned to the first reviewer the first reviewer takes you through different stages revision one revision two and it can take long time yes and you cannot go to the next reviewer until the until reviewer a is satisfied and has approved your text the first one um, uh, focuses on 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 content and the second on format yes so you are assigned to reviewers and they go all the way with uh, with you and when they, they when they are satisfied, then it goes back to the editor in chief who makes the final decisions. But it is a very good option for new for novice um, novice authors. You can uh, because they guide you, and you can always you can always learn. Even when the the final decision is not publishable, then 
you have learned a lot because you because you uh, you go through all this learning, revising, checking, and you can get in touch with the well, not in touch, but you can start a dialogue with the reviewer through the editors. Okay, it takes about also I think the longest the longest one to get uh, the longest process to get your manuscript published is the TESOL journal. The TESOL journal and after that the next TESOL journal which takes about about um, one year, one year, one year in average. Yeah, so please keep that in mind. You are welcome. You are welcome to submit your 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 manuscripts, your texts there. Yes. Okay. Any questions here? No? Should we continue? Yes, Roxana? Yes. Uh, when an article is rejected by one of these uh, institutions, are you told why it has been rejected or just, just re rejected? No, no. Mm -hmm. it, you, you have to get at the decision and why. The only, the only time when you are probably is when, when it does not pass the the editor. Okay. In that, they say it's not appropriate for this for this uh, journal. Mm -hmm. But and after that, you always know what is going on. Mm -hmm. And then an article that has been rejected by uh, one of these journals or institutions can be presented to another one that probably will succeed. Or oh, is, yes. is not that is something that we all do. Probably, probably, as I said, probably is not even the text. Probably is because it's not appropriate for the focus of the journal. But if you have your revisions, if you have, uh, if somebody, somebody has revised your text, you can always improve and send to another, another journal. And you have a lot of examples that I have given you. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That is always a learning process. Yes, uh -huh. I just. Um, well, later I will tell you uh, about, a, about uh, an experience I had. Any other, any other question about this? Thank you. Process? But all submissions are welcome. Yes, nobody, nobody is like, just because it's you, it's going to be rejected. They are going to, they probably, they don't like the text. But they don't know you, yes? So submit, submit your articles. This is my recommendation. Okay, so, we will do so, Araceli, we will do so. Please do. Mm -hmm. Publication process, yes. How to deal, well, how to deal with acceptance is not difficult. We all like that, we all, we all happy rejection. How to deal with the rejection is not easy. And it happens all the time. Last year I was rejected in in a in a in one of the journals I showed you, and uh, and you know what happened? I sent my article, and um, I think the reviewers the reviewers wanted to change so many things that I said. No, I don't want to change the focus. It is my article. It was at the end of the revision. I didn't like the result. Yes. So I was not happy and my, my, my article was rejected, but then I sent it to, another, to a chapter call and it was accepted, yes. Because, because I liked them, the, I liked the, the recommendations. The only thing that I didn't like was the, the perspective. The reviewers were telling me, the, were, were asking me to do change, something that I really wanted to communicate. So, it's not a problem. Yes, it's not a problem, and uh, and there, that's the only way to learn to start into this. Sometimes you get accepted, and probably with minor minor recommendation. It is um, minor revisions. It's not very common to just go through all the process and not making revisions. That does not happen. You must always be willing to make revisions, to, to correct, to make some changes. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but try, try to do it. Okay, so let's, uh, 
let's talk about these uh, final final remarks and then we can go into the questions for questions and uh, answers if you want to publish your work analyze the genre there are a lot a lot of examples uh, choose the journal that is adequate for your for your uh, field for your kind for the kind of work that you do read the articles published yes check that there have been uh, publications related to your topic it means that they like the topic uh, you can first choose your target journal newsletter or book yes and analyze the genre check the kind of articles published analyze the guidelines carefully very very carefully remember that one of the reasons for not getting accepted is because they don't follow the guidelines of the journal ask questions yes always ask questions uh, get in touch with the editor we are always going to answer your questions probably we're not going to review your article before beforehand but we can give you recommendations Sometimes I say, okay, I'll do this, do this, and then submit it. When you analyze the guidelines, make a checklist. In some journals, they already have a checklist. But if not, make your own checklist. This, this, and when you, before you submit it, start, start checking every single point in the, in the guidelines. Uh, submit your work, really. When you think you're ready, when you have done all these, submit your work. Yeah, be brave, yes? Be brave. And then wait for reviews and decisions. Reviews usually take two months, two months, three months, probably more, yes? There are journals or there are, uh, yeah, journals or books. Books are even, it's a longer process sometimes. It is two years to get your, 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 your chapter published. So if you want to, if you want to publish, start now. <laughs> Time will pass anyway. So <laughs> wait for reviews and decisions. Somebody mentioned this before. Be patient with the journal. Why? Because all the people involved in journals are volunteers. Mm. Yes, we don't get paid at all. I do this in my free time. Don't ask me why. <laughs> because, <laughs> but I do this on top of everything. The same as all people involved in the journals. We don't get, we don't ask authors anything it's free it's open open journals just a question so be be patient with the journal they might take a long time to do this we cannot hurry reviewers if they are giving classes mm -hmm. and right now for example imagine uh, imagine the time they have to take and be patient with yourself when you see the manuscript all with uh, notes and corrections don't get dis disappointed it's just it's the text and it's always an opportunity to learn be patient with yourself uh, feel that you are doing something um, something different your work if they take the time to correct your work is because your work is worth it. they don't correct we don't correct anything that we don't think it's worth it. Yes, we take the time to help you because we know that what you are doing is valuable. Mm -hmm. So be patient with yourself also and say, okay, let's correct this. And I always say, okay, <laughs> I agree. I agree with the, with with your um, with your comments because some these people these people are just. Uh, analyzing, correcting your manuscript without knowing anything about you. And it has to be very objective. They don't know where you work. They don't, we try to remember that it's blind peer review. They don't know anything about your context, about you, about your work, about your student. They only 
the point is that it is clear for all kinds of audiences. The text has to be clear and readable for everybody. Mm -hmm. That is the point. It's not against you. It's not against us because I am also an author. <laughs> uh, so be patient. Persevere with corrections. If it is necessary to do it six times, do it six times. Yes, persevere with this. It will make you stronger. It will help you in your future writing. Yes, and be proud of yourself. You will be doing something that not everybody has the courage to do. Yes, be proud of yourself. If any, whatever the decision, the final decision is, you have learned something and you have gone through an experience that will help you in focusing and being objective with your own work. Yes, be critical with yourself in the good way. Mm -hmm. I guess what you are saying, sorry, Araceli, is helping us to understand how our students feel when they need to write, or we ask them to write, and now we must understand the feelings, the, 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 all the type of feelings they go through when we correct their homework. And we need to be, and we, and we need compassion, and we need every, 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 every single thing that you've been saying. You need to uh, from the beginning, from the from the beginning, Araceli, up to now, you've been talking about feelings because <laughs> because what, what they will say, what will they say about my article? Will they reject it? So I guess that this is a good moment to think about our students too. I guess somebody else wanted to say something. Yes, please. Uh -huh. I, I, can I see? Raj, I guess. Yeah, I just wanted to check is that, do, do we submit to one journal at a time or can we submit to multiple journals? Yeah. You have to submit one, your article, the, the article that you submit, you have to wait until you have a final decision and then with the corrections made and everything, you can submit it to another journal. It's not ethical to have the same, the same uh, article, the same text, at the, uh, being evaluated at the same time. It's not ethical. You need to, uh, that's why you need to have, as we say in our, uh, our uh, Latin American countries, tener las velitas prendidas. <laughs> we, have to, we have to have several, several articles, several texts ongoing, yes? In this moment, for example, I have one I submitted to the Mixtizo Journal, and believe it or not, the editor in chief is being harder on me, harder. And she sent us, I don't know who, but I'm sure that she has sent our article because it's with my student in the master's, our article to the hardest reviewers. I am sure because, but I have learned so much. Uh, I have that, I have a chapter in Colombia going on, the one that was rejected before, and another chapter in Canada. Yes, but I started this a year ago. I started this process a year ago. So you have to be keeping this all the time. That's why I think that uh, you have to keep yourself motivated. And you know what, when you write, you force yourself to read, to explore in depth that, that uh, that topic, that topic, if you want to write about, I don't know, Oil. Oil. the skills, then you have to read about skills and you have to, you have to see what other people have done in that. It's not only uh, writing, yes, you have to do your work. But yes, you have to be very, very proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. I think I'm almost finishing, Jaime. Don't worry, we will have plenty of time for questions. I hope, I hope that someday you tell me, you send me a message telling me I did it. Yes, I did it. I will be very, very happy to know that you have done, you have done it. That because of your uh, bottom-up motivation, you have done it. Yes. It is a great feeling. It is a great feeling to see, to see your name next to a, next to an academic article. When you Google to see your name next to an academic article and not to a meme or not to something that happened, it's so rewarding 
to see your name as part of this community, of this community of ELT researchers, teachers, mm -hmm. speakers, mm -hmm. friends, and uh, well, okay, that's what I can tell you about publication, uh, about the process, about growing, growing as teachers, growing as researchers, growing as authors, and um, if you have any questions, I will go back, but I just want to show you my um, my email, and then we go back to questions. This is my email. You can write it with the Salas, or you can go directly to the to the journals. You can ask for this presentation, of course. Mm -hmm. Would you? I, I will ask for it, Araceli, so we, I can sh share it with uh, the 65, 68 professionals we have in our WhatsApp group. Now oh, this. Is now, this is time for us for questions, but before yes. people ask you questions, let me tell you my feelings. I felt uh, as a student learning <laughs> from you, uh, feeling uh, fear, feeling uh, uh, being afraid of, if I know so much, if I, if I have taught English for so many years, now we need to understand how our oh, students boy. feel when we ask them to do something You've been saying, be brave, be brave, be brave. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. And that's what we have to understand. That's the way our students feel. And now, much more when they are, when they are working through uh, the Zoom and the Google and everything else. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation, Araceli. Could you please stop uh, sharing your screen yeah. so, we, so we can see everybody else's faces? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Because that's another important thing to see our faces. Your screen is stop. Stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So feel free to ask. Uh, we have, let me see, we have <laughs> 10 minutes. 10 British American minutes to talk. <laughs> yes. Okay. Who wants to start? <laughs> Who wants to start? Okay, uh, I just have a very brief comment about Hello, Rana in England. Yeah. Nice to uh, see you, Rana. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure always, yeah. Uh, yeah, first of all, like Araceli, uh, always wonderful. It's always wonderful to hear from you, I mean, your expertise about academic writing and being an interviewer. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was great. It was great indeed. Uh, just a just, just couple of things I, mean, I just want to add to it. Uh, it's, it's a very new, new term, we call it research consortiums. And in the UK, we are working a lot on these research consortiums, uh, which means like two or three people, even within the institute or out of the institute, or two, three people from two different institutes, uh, they can join hand together to produce an article or a research topic or something like that. So we are, we are working, really working, and this is re working really good because then you have different expertise and different people uh, from different institutes or within your institute or within your domain uh, who can work together on an article and then they can send it for publication. So, I mean, if people want to work on that idea, the search consortium, that's, that's a wonderful idea. And I'm, I'm up for it. I mean, if, if anybody wants to join me for that research consortium, uh, number one. Uh, number two is, uh, yeah, it's very important to stay, as I said, said to stay motivated. Uh, about all these research topics and articles. And RSL is absolutely right. I mean, it takes one year at least to, to, to start, finalize, and publish. And sometimes one and a half year, 18 months to two years to get one good article produced and published. Uh, uh, what we do here is we just, uh, we just keep ourselves a timeline. Okay, look, uh, we are three people and we need to finish this article in six months or four months. So that timelines keep us very motivated. Okay, yeah, there is a timeline we need to finish it and then of course submitting and then then it all to the journal and reviewers mean how much time they take. Uh, so yeah, so this was just my point. We said consortiums and time limits. Uh, they are they're very good for, for, for promoting research articles and research to topics. Thank you, Rana Bilal. Thank I you think very that much. What, something that we can do is research groups in yeah. this community. Uh -huh. And then the product could be articles. Yeah, yeah. Or mentoring, mentoring about 
more experienced person with a novice teacher and everybody can get uh, benefited from that. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else, please? Any country? Uh, Jaime, I have a proposal. Who's, who's speaking? Ruben. Ah, hello, Ruben, in Lima. Yes. <laughs> yes, and after Ruben, can I just continue? Okay, Glenda yeah, sure, sure. in Lima too. Peruvians are taking over. Right, I, I am going to be very brief. I just want to state out my proposal. Well, I proposed first, in order to, um, to train ourselves in writing articles, we have to write articles to this, um, to the group of WhatsApp we have with you and all the colleagues here. Let's write articles. And I think Leticia will be, it is already in our WhatsApp group. So first, let's meditate on writing article, an article, a brief article, and publish in this WhatsApp group. Let's see how it comes. Okay, very good. Thank Glenda, I think Glenda wanted to speak and then yes. I Yes, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Araceli, thank you very much for such a beautiful, uh, encouraging webinar and all your ideas. Now, uh, I, I, I have like uh, lots of doubts, but you have clarified many of them. But, and I have, I have like kind of a, an article, yes, that I have written. And I have the ideas, but I need <laughs> that someone reads it. And then I think it would be probably for a newsletter. Yes, because it's not on something academic or, or something on a specific subject but it's something very general about the pandemic and how I have experienced it uh, in both universities where I work at the moment. And, and I was wondering where this should go. And, and what I wrote was, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, getting, it's getting old, <laughs> yes, because now as I haven't shared it, uh, some things of course uh, are gonna change and I can add things because I'm going to start, for example, the new semester uh, on tomorrow, Monday, it sounds like far, uh, and and I don't know. I I would like to to have somebody to to read it and then to give me ideas and suggestions uh, as where this can like fit. Yes, so, I, say, <laughs> I, yes because... I can do that. What I cannot do is like with, uh, a detailed a detailed revision. No, because that's not. What I do, but I can just take a look at it. Or as I mm -hmm. said, uh, and, and as uh, Ruben and uh, and Rana have said, we can create those groups, those uh, and, and and read each other's work, and um, do research in each one. But that's very important, and then that's what I was going to say. Please, if mm -hmm. you can watch, have something because many people come to me. And they say, but I don't know how to start. And, and, and I'm not going to write anything for them, yes? They need to come with something. Uh, with yes. Something we need to start from a big, some people say, yes, I want to do it. Okay, bring your manuscript. I don't have any, come on, no, you have to bring something. Yes, thank you. Yeah, of course. I, I, think, I think a good start could be, sorry, I think I'm just speaking in between. Uh, I think a good start could be probably we all should write one paragraph and send it to a group that why I cannot write, what's my fear, writing a paragraph about it. And it could be a good start to start writing about it. What are my fears of not writing? Mm -hmm. And also, sorry to interrupt, uh, but going to Glenda's point, uh, the newsletters could be a good way to start that you mentioned, Araceli. Yeah. So uh, maybe, Glenda, you might want to check which of the newsletters has uh, for TESOL has those those mm -hmm. topics and that relate to your topic and send it to that. The EFLIS newsletter could be a good start. So that's a suggestion. Thank you, Gracia. Yes, I'm, I have just opened the TESOL webpage and I'm, I'm checking, it, but I have to read it. Thanks, thanks, thank yeah, you guys. My interest group, uh, my interest uh, section in uh, TESOL has also the call for publication open. It's a global neighbors is the name and it's a newsletter and I can share it with you, Jaime. Mm -hmm. Please do, Araceli, and I can share it with everybody else. Uh, Mauricio, maybe in Colombia has something to say, my good, good friend, Mauricio, who's mm -hmm. always uh, traveling everywhere in the world. Your microphone, please, Mauricio. Oh, yes. Based on my experience in Colombia, unfortunately, we just write articles 
to graduate. I mean, it's like a requirement for universities. So we just write the articles. They are published, or sometimes it's not necessary that they are published, and that's it. We don't want to write maybe more than that. So it's basically, as Araceli mentioned, is one requirement for graduation. Thank you. What about Maria Elba in Bolivia? Are you there, Maria Elba? Something to say about what you do in Bolivia? No? Tito in Ecuador? Hello, everyone. Yes. Um, um, I believe it's a, it's a challenge that we need to uh, get into, I believe, as uh, one of the participants said that we've been we've been around we've been teaching and uh, it, it is time for us to place all that tacit knowledge into a, a, on a on a paper and perhaps publish it but we need to start somewhere my question is where can I find good samples to follow because I do like writing but well, no I'm lying to you I like writing but I do not post it to the world but until I, I feel comfortable with it but I, I, I really need to get that sense that I'm doing it right and then no, I have no problem to publish it or just post it so I think this is the right place for me to make that question right uh, at a seminar. as no I question. said choose the journal and read the articles published by that journal by them. those are the best examples that you will find yeah, and they are models. Yes, Marisa. Thank you. Your microphone, Marisa. Okay, so then that was exactly what I wanted to mention. I was listening to, okay, to everybody here. So then it is very important to get familiar with the type of submissions. I mean, to before, okay, planning, no? I mean, it's very important to to read you know, uh, journals, uh, magazines, uh, specialized material, because from there we also can start like um, figuring out what we plan to do. You know? Because as you said, we can uh, write about our best practice, but we can also uh, make material reviews. You no, know? And this is very, I, I think it is like uh, going into step by step, right? Like the newsletters, then maybe a review of material, a new textbook, and then after preparing a, a, your own article. I mean, but it is important to, to check the genre, you not know, the genre, the, the format, the styles, as you have mentioned. And uh, the, the very good start is to, to get in touch with these publications. Yeah? So then publications that inspire you the same way that your talk you know, that has inspired all of us. So then, <laughs> that, that will be all. And just before finishing, I just wanted to thank you okay, very, very much for broadening our mindsets into this topic of research and for the the insights, okay, the invaluable insights provided here. Okay, that's all. Yes, very, very, very. Anybody else has something else to comment, to mention, to share? No? Uh, be, before your final words, uh, Leticia Araceli, let me be grateful once again. Let me be grateful once again because gratitude is very important in life, especially in these difficult times. Yes. And the following weeks, next Sunday, we will have Edison Santa Cruz. He will be talking about reflecting to write, Leticia, you see. Monica Rodriguez will be talking about the affective classroom. And then Gustavo Gonzalez will be talking about teachers as lifelong learners. And then Raj and Mary Scholl, it will be a surprise. Then our famous writer, book writer, article writer, Christine Kuhn, who was the TESOL president. Yes. Uh, she will be talking about how the most productive TESOLers fit it all in, strategies for productivity and efficiency. Wow. And our, my great, great good friend who went with me to Spain, Mauricio Arango, do you remember that beautiful experience in, in Granada? And he will be talking about facilitating online instruction through personalized materials. Wow, wonderful topics. And also we will have Beatriz Erazo talking about critical thinking. Skip Gold will be talking about developing teacher reflection through online peer coaching, my goodness. And Ruben Garcia from Peru going through empathy, 
to effective teaching outcomes. Esther Vasquez will be talking about mind the brain, mind the gap. Goodness. Uh, Rosemary hasn't told me thing, anything yet about her presentation in Bolivia. Tito Hidalgo will be talking about, I like this, my goodness, soft skills in ELT for the new normal. My goodness. Nice. Uh, Monica Rosas, do you happen to know her, Araceli? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Aras, but, but for the people who don't know, she is uh, Leticia Araceli's daughter. And Glenda Gallardo will be talking about Blackboard tools and activities yes. to teach English. And the last but not the least, Eugenia, Eugenia De Losa will be talking about, well, she hasn't told me yet, but as you can see, we need to be very grateful. We will have wonderful guest speakers, wonderful topics, but everything will be possible if you are present, if you share these links and if these videos. Okay, Leticia, your final words? No, thank you very much. It was really, really a nice experience. And for the future speakers, I want to tell you that this is like uh, talking to friends. Okay. Yes, that's yes. the idea, Leticia. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. We are just human beings. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, see you soon. I hope to see your publications soon. Please share, share them with me at least. And uh, see you soon. See you soon. Anybody else wants to say something before we go on? We go? Away. Well, thank you so much, Jaime. Thank yeah, you. So much thank you. Have yes. such a wonderful weekend. Yeah, yeah. every rest of the weekend. Thank you very much, Araceli. It's yes. so yeah. a pleasure to see you. It was good to see you, dear friend. Thank you. Very useful all the best, information. Bye -bye. A wonderful week for all of you guys. Yeah, the same Let's thing. Some positive thank attitude. you. Bye bye. Yes, Araceli. <laughs> And we are going to publish this, the gratitude words for you, Araceli. Thank you. <laughs> what yes, about the picture? Our, she will be our mentor. Yeah. Yes, sure, sure, sure. I'm, I'm the picture. Already the taken. picture, I'm already taken. I'm the picture. Oh. Okay, okay. So you got me on guard. <laughs> okay. We were in the smiling. <laughs> Jaime. We were in the smiling. So, all your beautiful faces. One, two, one, three. Okay. Wait, wait, don't go, don't go. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll see you next Sunday. Thank you, bye. 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 Bye.